What we're going to be looking at today is something called an equilibrium ice problem. Up until now, during all the equilibrium problems that you've done, you've been given the concentrations of all reactants and products at equilibrium and then asked to solve for a KEQ value. And sometimes you were also asked to determine if the reaction was reactants or products favored. What's going to be new for today is that you're going to learn how to calculate those equilibrium concentrations and then solve for the KEQ. So we're basically taking one step back. In all the problems that we're going to do, we're going to set up this thing called an ICE table. And ICE is just an acronym. The I in ICE stands for initial concentrations or molarities. You can use the term concentration and molarity interchangeably. The C in ICE stands for change in the concentrations, the molarities, and the E stands for the equilibrium concentration or molarity. So for the initial, that's when you first put the chemicals together in the beaker to react with one another, what their molarities are at the beginning of the problem. And then uh, you guys have seen that the reaction, it takes a while, you saw a demo earlier in the year with some water being passed back and forth between two beakers. Uh, it takes a little bit to get to that equilibrium concentration. So <clears throat> we're gonna see the differences between the concentrations when you first start, how much they change, and then what their equilibrium concentrations are. So to do an ice problem, you're going to uh, do a couple of steps here. Your first thing that you're going to do is figure out the concentrations in moles per liter of all the substances you have information about. You're going to fill those concentrations into this ice table that you'll see. Um, unless otherwise stated, you can make the assumption that there aren't any products in the beginning because the reaction hasn't started yet. So initial concentrations of all products would be zero. You'll use your balanced equation to determine the changes that would take place. The change line is mole ratio dependent. I'll show you what that means in just a second. The reactant side is always going to decrease. The product side is always going to increase. You'd write a KEQ expression and solve for that KEQ. So let's try one. It says we're going to take 15 moles of carbon monoxide and 9 moles of chlorine and put them into a 3 liter flask and allow them to react according to that equation that you see there. Then it also tells us there's 4.5 moles of chlorine present at equilibrium. We want to figure out the concentrations and solve for the KEQ. If we look back at the original steps, step one was figure out the concentrations of all the substances you have information about. So I'm going to do just that. What I'm going to find is the concentration of carbon monoxide initially. When the reaction first starts, what's its molarity? Well, if we're putting 15 moles worth of carbon monoxide, <clears throat> into a 3 liter flask, the molarity of that carbon monoxide is going to be 5 molar. I'm going to do the same thing with the chlorine. The chlorine at the start of the reaction, there's 9 moles of chlorine being put into that same 3 liter flask. So that means the molarity of my chlorine to start is 3. And then underneath the balanced equation, it tells you right here, there's 4.5 moles of chlorine present at equilibrium. So chlorine at equilibrium equals 4.5 moles over that same 3 liter flask. We're not changing the size of the container that it's in. So the molarity of that chlorine at equilibrium is one and a half molar. Now let's set up this ice table. 
So I'm just going to rewrite that balanced equation from up above. And then I'm going to put the acronym ICE down the side. And then you're going to set this up as a little grid and fill in the information that you know. So carbon monoxide's initial molarity is 5. The chlorine's initial molarity is 3. And the chlorine's equilibrium molarity is 1.5. It also told us up above here uh, in step number two, unless otherwise stated, you can assume initially there aren't any products. So the initial concentrations of all products would be zero. So my initial COCl2 is going to be zero. This is all the information that we're told in the problem. And now the rest of the problem we have to figure out on our own. So I'm going to change colors just so you can see basically what information was provided for us versus what we have to solve for. So if C stands for the change in concentration, and if you look at that chlorine, it started with a value of 3 and ended with a value of 1.5, the change in that number, it went down by 1.5. So I'm going to subtract 1.5 from my chlorine as my change value. Now the change value line, it told us up here, the change value line is mole ratio dependent, meaning if it's a one to one ratio, the change is going to be the same number. If it's a two to one ratio, you'd have to double the change number. The reactant side always decreases, the product side always increases. So when I look at my carbon monoxide versus my chlorine, there's a little imaginary one-to-one -one ratio between these guys. So that means the number is going to be the same for the change value. And the reactant side always decreases, so I'll do a subtraction. There's also a one-to-one -one ratio between chlorine and our product. So this number is also going to be a 1.5. But because it's on the product side and products always increase, I'm going to make this plus 1.5. Now I'm going to use those change values to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of the carbon monoxide and the COCl2. So 5 minus 1.5 is 3.5. And 0 plus 1.5 is 1.5. So up above in part A, it said find the equilibrium concentrations of all reactants and products at equilibrium. E is your equilibrium line. So these right here, that's your answer to part A. All these are concentrations, so they would all have units of capital M. They're all molarities. There's part A. Part B, where we have to do the equilibrium constant. When we write equilibrium constants, we always do products over reactants. So my KEQ is going to equal COCl2 on top. This one here means that we usually would turn whatever number that goes there into an exponent down below something raised to the first power, we usually don't write that. We put that over our reactants, also to the first power. Now we're going to substitute in those equilibrium expressions, the highlighted green line there. I know that the COCl2 concentration is 1.5, and on the bottom, carbon monoxide is 3.5, Chlorine is 1.5, and I throw that in my calculator and solve, and I get a value of 0.29. There's my equilibrium constant. Part C wanted to know, does this reaction as written favor the reactants or the products? So this guy 
is a reactance favored reaction. And we know that because our KEQ value is less than 1. 